Hi, you've no doubt seen the EV blog HVP 70 70 meg differential uh, probe. It's been in many videos. I've been selling this on my store for many years. I do actually have it now, have it back in stock, by the way, so you can actually get it. Link down below. Anyway, it's one of the best high voltage probes on the market. It's designed by a Taiwanese company called uh, Sapphire, and they actually uh, rebadge. Uh, their brand under all the top names. I mean, uh, hang on, hang on. Yep, there we go. LaCroix <laughs> AP031 differential uh, probe. Exactly. Well, this one's actually uh, 20 megahertz bandwidth. My one's 70. But um, yeah, this is a Sapphire probe. And LaCroix and many other top brands in the industry rebadge Sapphire because they make the best uh, differential probes on the market. Anyway, it's not particularly cheap though. It's, you know, it's, it's a fairly decent investment, but it is a top performance, top quality uh, probe. So anyway, um, I saw that uh, Mixig had actually released, oh, upside down, all the electrons are going to fall out. A, uh, that they released their own line of lower cost uh, differential probes, and I thought, oh, okay, we'll have a squiz at them. But unfortunately, they didn't have, they only had two models, and none of them had uh, the divide by 10 and divide by 100 uh, range, which is what my HVP70 does. And I reckon this is better for general purpose use, for lower voltage use on lower voltage switch mode power supplies, or for for just general mains use. The others are literally high voltage differential probes. They're going to like the kilovolt range and stuff like that, which is great if you work on that uh, sort of stuff. But anyway, um, yes, this is common mode uh, plus minus 700 volts, li linear range plus minus 700 volts on the divide by 100. And that's good enough for like a DC plus ACP. Anyway, that's good enough uh, range for like 240 volt main stuff and of course 110 Yankee uh, mains stuff. So more than good enough. So I approached Mixig and I said, hey, I kind of like the price point of your probe, but can you actually design one that actually matches the specs of the HVP70, i.e. has uh, divide by 10 and divide by 100 mode. Anyway, they said, oh yeah, we'll have a go at it. And uh, I don't know, six months later or something it was, they came back and they released um, this which is, you can buy it for general sale, um, and it's uh, it's been available for a while. It's the DP1007, and sure enough, has the div uh, times 10 and times 100, or divide by 10, divide by 100. And it's um, and it, it performs pretty well. The spec sheets, I won't bother um, showing you, but they're, ident they're practically identical. Ever, they matched every single spec. Now, I was actually going to um, offer this one for sale on the store, because it is significantly cheaper than the uh, industry standard, so to speak, the um, Sapphire uh, probes. But unfortunately, when I tested this, it did have a problem with the common mode rejection ratio, the CMRR. And uh, it wasn't even close to meeting its uh, spec. And I think some people on the EEV blog forum uh, confirmed this as well. Anyway, the um, Mixig uh, got to work on it and they say that they think they have actually fixed that issue and um, that apparently a new model is coming out. Uh, it almost certainly be the same uh, number, but it'll have like... I don't know, some sort of hardware tweak or something that fixes the common mode rejection ratio. But apart from that, it's not a bad probe. And I was going to sell it on the uh, store, but because it had that issue, I didn't. And I kept on selling my uh, Sapphire, my trusty Sapphire probe. Anyway, so people wanted to know what's the actual rating of this thing. And that's what this video is about. I thought I'd actually test it because I have my high voltage AC standard here, which can go up to 1000 volts AC only at like one kilohertz. I can feed in an external uh, frequency, but it only goes up to like a couple of kilohertz tops or something. So anyway, um, th this will allow us to um, input up to a thousand volts um, RMS into this and see where this sucker clips. Let's go. Oh, by the way, it does come with all the accessories. They are very large though, like, you know, like the really high voltage stuff, not very, not very useful for, you know, getting in there on uh, PCBs and stuff like that in the giant... <laughs> Crocodile clips, look at that. It's enormous. <laughs> so here's the specs for those playing along at home. The DP1007 maximum differential test voltage uh, is rated as DC plus AC peak. And some people on the uh, forum seem to have uh, verified that that is uh, the case. And on the divide by 100 range, we're talking uh, 700 volts DC plus AC peak. Now, of course, it's not going to, due to the nature of how these things are actually designed, and I've done a teardown of the, uh, and a reverse engineering of the HVP70 
differential probe and this one will, the mixig will work exactly the same thing they've got a big input resistor compensator resistor divider network and stuff like that so it's not like you go over that and you're magically going to blow up your probe i don't think that is the case so anyway we're going to uh take it up here with our um ac voltage uh standard and see what's what and yes, uh, some people have uh, complained that uh, it's not great having the fixed leads on the long leads on the unit like this because that affects its high frequency performance. And yeah, I agree. It would have been better if they had like banana uh, jacks on there. I have asked them about that, but I don't know. They don't really seem interested in redoing it um, because they'd have to redo the tool, the casing and the tool in and the whole damn thing. But anyway, that's no different to the uh, Sapphire probe. So it, it is what it is. So we'll plug that in there, and what do we get? Sure enough, we get our 10 volts RM AC RMS there. So we're on the uh, times 100 mode. So yeah, let's take it up. And yes, this bad boy can go all the way to 11. Beauty. All right, so we've got 100 volts RMS there. And by the way, the output uh, voltage of this is going to clip at uh, 7 volts. So there you go. So I think that's what we're going to see here. We're looking for where, at what point it actually clips. And when it exceeds that, like, I, like I'm not going to take this thing to failure, okay? I don't even think I have the voltage to take this thing to failure. So yeah, I, I, we just want to see where it clips. Now, unfortunately, I can't just dial this up. Like, I can change to 200 volts. Uh, but, uh, well, it doesn't go instantly. There is some settling time. This thing's all analogy goodness. So, and occasionally it trips out like that. Um, so I've got to re-operate it like that. And bingo, we're now at 300 volts. This is our RMS, of course. We don't, um, yeah, there's our peak to peak. 800 volts, 850 volts, sorry. 400 volts, 500 volts, 600 volts. Oh, yeah, 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 we're starting to clip there. And 700 volts, you can see that we're clipping, right? I'm going to take this sucker up. So let's call it... Let's call that clip. Oh, let, yeah, that is definitely clipped. You can see it's clipped. So it clips at like 500 and 560, 570. It just happens to be right on the edge there, doesn't it? 580, 590. Let's say it can go up to 580 volts before it RMS, before it clips. 590. I'm pretty sure that is clipping. And it's giving us an overload flash there. You can see that. It's actually flashing that it's overloading. So it does have a clip indicator. That's really very nice. Now let's go back to 580. Nah, still, it still thinks it's clipping. 550, still clipping. I'll find the point where it stops. I'll turn the studio lights off a bit. Okay, we're solid. We're at 420, 430, 440, 450. Just wait a bit. Nah, 460. It did seem to have a hysteresis because it had it only turned off when I went back down to 420. So, oh, 470. There you go. So 460. Oh, no, 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 it's good. Ah, that was just the uh, settling time. Is That was just the output uh, settling time. So 470 RMS, 480. Yep. Okay. So let's just, I'm not care if it's 475 or whatever. Okay. Round about, yeah, four, 470 uh, RMS, it'll go up to, but we saw that we still got well over that on the voltage here. So let's go up 580. It was another, another hundred volts RMS before the actual output waveform clipped. So that's interesting. All right. I'm going to take this sucker up. I think I may have actually done this. But 600 volts, 700 volts RMS, okay, 800 volts RMS, 900 volts RMS, 1,000 volts RMS. We're not blowing this sucker. I'm going all the way to 11. Here we go. 1,100 volts RMS. As I said, <laughs> yeah, you're not just going to magically blow it. No problems whatsoever. It just clips, so it still works. And take it back down to 500, and Bob's your uncle. No worries. Oh, by the way, of course, uh, there could be some degradation in the performance with frequency as well. So this is only at one kilohertz, obviously, but it just shows that you're not going to blow the arse out of the thing. 
Oh, by the way, I've just put the uh, probe back to one to one here so you can see the actual output voltage. You know how it said uh, seven volts, maximum output voltage? Well, yeah, we're actually uh, plus minus seven. We're uh, 14 volts uh, peak. So it does at least do the plus minus uh, seven. So we're at 500 volts um, RMS, by the way. And if we go up to where we clipped, which was 580, wasn't it? Or slightly under that, 16 volts. So, and then we start to clip once we get above, uh, that's 590. So 580 volts there. So yeah, it'll actually go to eight volts instead of the uh, seven. So that's actually over spec on the actual output voltage going into your scope. So there you go. I hope I've answered uh, that question. This is just like for basically the forum people who are <laughs> commenting on this uh, particular probe. And as always, the EV blog forum, the number one destination for test equipment on the entire interwebs, I'm telling you. If you want to talk about test equipment, it's a place to do it. There's even a test equipment anonymous uh, in case you've got, you know, psychological problems collecting test equipment, which is quite common. Anyway, um, yeah, EV blog forum link down below uh, for this particular um, probe anyway. But yeah, it's cool that it gives you like an overload indicator there, flishy flashy, but it's at like 470 or 480 volts when its actual output clipping occurred at 580 volts. So, and as you saw, it survived up to 1100 volts RMS, no wackers. Rubbish. Everything has user serviceable parts inside it. All right, I can't finish this video until I open the damn thing. Um, not sure how though. Ah, sneaky bastards, there's some trimmers under there. Even sneakier. So here we go, we're in. I've got a metal shield covering the input section and the two input uh, high voltage resistor strings as you'd expect. So once we flip that over, I expect to see a whole, a whole bunch of they through, oh, probably SMD jobbies all in series and maybe some compensation caps across them, just like in any uh, high voltage diff probe. This looks like our output driver does it. We've got our buttons on the top with the uh, LEDs there to light them up. And oh, by the way, the uh, strain relief, it's pretty good. That's not too shabby at all. And your metal threaded inserts everywhere. There's five screws to get this thing off. There you have it. Got ourselves a uh, DC to DC converter there. No surprises whatsoever. That's an isolated jobby. That's an 0512. So that'd be uh, five volts in and plus minus 12 volts out isolated. Of course, that's how you get your uh, plus minus seven volt or eight volt as we've uh, measured swing on this thing. Got a regulator up there and uh, that stuff on the bottom, that's got to be additional regulation as well. That's not part of the output driver because the output driver comes from up here. There's our output termination resistor and what is that jobby? There you go, that's a THS 3091. That's a uh, high voltage, low noise uh, current feedback op amp. None of your standard uh, op amp rubbish. Current feedback uh, jobby, really high bandwidth. That'll do uh, up to 200 megahertz at a low gain, of course. Um, so what's the output gain? Maybe 10 or something, I'm not sure. Anyway, that's certainly a suitable output driver. We've got ourselves a fair dinkum relay there. No wackers made in Japan. All the best stuff's made in Japan. We'll have the probes made in China. So there you go, go figure. Anyway, um, yep, here's our differential amplifier. And there's our differential amp, a THS uh, 4631. That's a uh, high speed FET input op amp. So we've got a couple of trimmers there and uh, little 10 turn jobbies. Got a couple of variable caps up here. Of course, at this point, you expect to see complete symmetry. So in the two variable caps up there, as I said, there's your high voltage string there. There's your caps for each run. The reason that they have to use separate resistors, because each resistor is only like, you know, 200 odd volts for that uh, package size. I would have expected a larger package size than that actually, so eh, I don't know, it's maybe a bit how you're doing. Um, anyway, you saw it, it did actually survive uh, the voltage, so no wackers. Um, and yes, as I said, uh, capacitors on there to uh, compensate. But uh, yeah, actually, what is that? I can't, is that four meg? Like the, I think the Sapphire one's four meg. So yeah, that's exactly what you'd expect. Um, it's just that, yeah, I'm surprised not to see uh, larger packages there for bigger voltage offset. Anyway, there'll probably be some diodes in there for protection as well. Is there anything on the bottom? No, I don't. Actually, uh, they're probably relying on the input clamping of the op amp, I would say, because I don't see any diodes in there, do you? 
And that micro there makes sense. It's another one of those busy bees that we saw in the uh, previous video with the uh, mixed current clamp uh, the teardown thingo. So yeah, that makes sense. You're going to reuse the, the uh, same family micro within uh, you know most of your products where it's suitable. Anyway, there's not much else around there. Um, that's about all she wrote, really. So there you go. It's got a differential high voltage uh, input string, differential amplifier, output uh, current mode um, op amp uh, cable driver, and just some control and miscellaneous stuff. And Bob's your uncle. So there you have it, that's inside the DP1007 high voltage differential probe. As I said, EV blog forum link down below to discuss this thing and I'll keep you updated if I ever put it on the store or if I get the like updated version with the uh, common mode rejection ratio and I'll probably do some tests on that to confirm. So anyway, if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up, comment down below. Catch you next time.